Welcome back to Press Here. We think of the internet as cutting edge, but in fact, some ideas online are rather stale. For instance, hotel deal sites have been around for 15 years. These days, it would be unusual not to book your hotel online through Travelocity or Hotwire or Expedia, which all work largely the same way. But a small group of entrepreneurs at GuestMob have a new model. GuestMob guarantees you a heavily discounted price on a quality hotel room, but you don't find out what hotel until just a few days before your stay. That's because Guest Mob puts your reservation and dozens of other people's into a portfolio of sorts and auctions that portfolio off to the lowest bidding hotel at the very last minute. Guest Mob CEO Yan Gong Yang says that trick means the price you pay for a hotel could be half as much as you'd pay for a hotel, even on a discounter like Hotwire. Joined by John Swartz of USA Today and Sarah Lacey of Pando Daily. The way I imagine it, and there are kind of two ways your business is different, but the, the bulk way is a good analogy might be, you know, the tour bus pulling up to the hotel and the tour bus operator getting out and going to the front desk saying, I got 50 people in that bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can you bid me? Yeah. And then going to the next hotel and that sort of thing. That's what's that's half the model right there, right? That's part of the model, right. I mean I think what we we have this <coughs> we have this expression that we call the bag of cash strategy, where we're basically approaching a hotel relatively last minute and we say, you know, I've got a bag of twenty thousand dollar and hundred dollar sure. bills and we've got fifty people and we need rooms. You can either get them or the guy across the street will get them. And if they have capacity and they haven't sold them on their traditional channels, they'll take it at a discount. Go ahead. I was just saying, you know what? I, I love everything about your site because I hate existing online travel. <laughs> I've written about this a ton. I think there's, I think it's stupid to pretend that you can sell hotel rooms the way you sell rental cars or flights. They're not a commodity item. You need to either have one or two things. You need to have a jet setter model where you're doing gorgeous curation, yep. or you need to have really be on the side of consumers. And I feel like these sites have all been on the side of the travel partners, and they've basically right. well, become they're invented by yeah, the well, and they basically partners, become yeah. these. Well, I mean, initially, some of them started out as disruptors, but now right. they just have, you know, kind of become, you know, these doormats where they just, they're totally on the side of, like, Avis and the rental car companies and Hilton and everything else, and no one's on the side of the consumer, and we feel like because you can go online and book it, suddenly we're supposed to all love it, but there's just been no innovation because innovation is good for the consumer and bad for the chains. And the other half of this is that that hotel is guaranteed no matter what. I mean, the hotel when, is I, when I book right. on your site, right. I'm getting a hotel. It's, we use the analogy of we're going to bid you out, but you're gonna, I'm going to get a hotel no matter That's what. That's correct. I mean, I think what you want to, I'll beg to differ to what you said about the mm -hmm. commodity, right? Within a certain, we, we have this concept of hotel collections. Mm -hmm. and. It's not kosher to say this on television, but we view oh, it as ahead. a commodity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go right ahead. So I'll be provocative. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. view it. We view it as a commodity, right? So if, mm -hmm. if I've got, we don't work with the St. Regis or the Four Seasons because I've got both of them across from the street from one another. For some customers, right. they're interchangeable. Sure. Right? So why don't you price it in a in a relatively commoditized? And I'm putting that into brackets. Commoditized. Well, it's still a high-end product. But I want to have the ability to get the best price that I can quote unquote get from either one of them. If I'm flexible, if I'm willing to go to either the four Saint, the four season or the, or the Saint Regis. In the case of the bus, in, in the case of the bus, if you go to a customer and you say, "Hey, I'm going to do this negotiation," you're not sure that you're going to get the hotel. You're not sure at what price you're going to get the hotel. So you've got a coordination problem, right? Because mm -hmm. you know the price may be 120, 130. So there's actually an uncertainty that we're, that we saw with our algorithm that says we're going to make a prediction of what we think we can get that hotel at. And we'll take the risk away from you, the consumer. That's we we guarantee you the room. We we're taking the risk and we use a price. price. You buy yes. it, that's it. Now, the commodity argument actually works if you're able to say, I'm gonna give you a basket that you're comfortable and confident that the hotels within that basket are relatively equivalent. Which you name. Which we name. We yeah, show the hotels, yeah, yeah, we show yeah. you the, you know, we, the, the collection is something that's very manual. We spend a lot of time looking at these hotels and asking ourselves the question, would I send my mom to this property? Would I be comfortable telling her? The thing Sarah described, it either, it either needs to be curated or it needs to be, it was actually, it's, you're actually both. We're doing both, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So you start with the curation where you create the basket and then then the algo stuff comes in, right? Because I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd in, in when, you, when it comes to pricing and data. So we're using a lot of data signals to actually say, what do we think is going to be the right set of 
occupancy metrics and demand metrics and w at what level do we think we can price it. Sometimes we'll lose money because we're making that guarantee, right? So we're really more of an right. actuarial business because we, we're, we're doing these sort of loss and wins and we're sort of optimizing so the, it over time. So right. the viewer follows you. You're saying, uh, you look at the date, I say uh, February 17th or whatever. That's correct, yeah. And you say San Francisco, February 17th, we're gonna guess $130. Right. Uh, or what have you. That's and I'm going to get a hotel room for $130. That's right. You're then going to go out and bid me and everyone else who wants to stay in this hotel That's uh, uh, at that price. If you if you get 120 you keep the, de the Delta. We there. keep the Delta, and if we get 140 we get hit. But we also learn, right? right. We learn, because there's a set of data, right? So we, we guessed that it was going to be 130 and based on the other factors that we saw in, we were off. So now, the, the next time around, when we'll see the same set of metrics, maybe it'll be 140 so that we minimize losses. And that's the machine learning algorithm. This right? is not an, a whole lot unlike selling wheat on the Chicago Board of Trade. If you think about the value of a hotel room, it actually follows the value of a derivative, right? So you yeah. think a lot about Black Shoals and how you think about a derivative actually dropping like that in terms of its value, right? So the best time to buy it is right before expiration if you know it's going to go to, it's going to go to close to zero. Actually, technically, it goes out to the to the marginal cost sure, of sure, that sure. room. I always tell people, what is the marginal cost of a room at the Four Seasons? Mm -hmm. Right? It's the cost of cleaning. Right. And I hate to use the word. I, mean, I love the Four Seasons. Right? It's the cost of cleaning, and it's the cost of shampoo bottle. What's that? It's 40 <laughs> bucks, right? Mm -hmm. You're lucky if you get a room in the Four Seasons for less than $400, right? right. So between, and, and this is supposed to be the internet. This is supposed to be an efficient market, right? right. Between 440 so, that's what I learned to be so, consumer So you surplus. saw this flaw in this crowded market. I mean, right. it, 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 that's why you got into it. I mean, that's that's why we got into it. And I'm not from the hotel industry, so I'm, I'm coming at it from that very sort of analytical, like, this just doesn't feel right. There's something going on, and there's a set of, Structures in the industry that are preventing price discovery in economics, and that keeps you safe. Go ahead, sir. I was say, so, how Go do ahead. hotels feel about you? Well, <laughs> it's interesting. There's two constituencies here. There, there's the hotel property itself. Mm -hmm. The guy or the gal who runs the property has a mortgage, and then there are the brands that are getting a commission from the hotel. Sure. The brands don't aren't super happy about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But the hotels, to the extent that we're saying, hey, sell as much of your inventory as you can, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have conflict with what you're selling on your channel. You don't have to give up 25% of, of revenue up front, which is what they do with the traditional OTAs. We're coming out of the last minute, mm -hmm. and we're, so we're minimizing, we're actually solving a timing problem for the hotel. You know, mm -hmm. the, the simplest way to say this is there's no channel conflict. They're, they're happy, they're, some of them, not all of them, some of them are happy, but we don't have to be working with all the hotels. So whenever we have a collection of, say, eight hotels, we tend to have two to three friendly hotels. Mm -hmm. and, and it's great for them, because we're actually concentrating the demand onto the few hotels that are working with us, and they're benefiting. Which ones are working with you? Which hotels? And it's going to be very fast, you've got to go to commercial. So there's a number of hotels that we work with. We don't disclose exactly which one. We show the entire collections, right? Okay. Some hotels work with us some weeks, some, some don't. It depends on whether they have occupancy or yeah, not. Yeah, I have to, I have to cut, cut you right. off there. Guestmob.com, correct? Thank you. Yeah. All right, Jan, thank you very much. Right. Up next, Apple has sold millions of the new iPad. All but one of them is safe from these guys. When Press Here continues.